Hello and welcome everyone, this is Mr. Yumath again and we will continue our discussion on curvilinear coordinate systems and how to calculate the gradient, divergence and the curl in this uh, very very general frame of reference that we are talking about. Now in the first video I showed you these formulas, I showed you that these are uh, the Lamé coefficients and one can calculate these in Cartesian, in cylindrical and spherical coordinates and how to actually uh, calculate them. But as you remember I told you it was quite quite um, graphical so uh, not that much mathematics involved in that and every physicist and every engineer maybe might be um, forced to investigate a more complicated uh, coordinate system for example a conical uh, coordinate systems or an elliptical coordinate systems now how do we calculate this um, these uh, Lamé coefficients then if we actually don't know how um, to draw these kind of things and actually it's it's really really handy to have some tools in your hand without uh, repeating all that drawing stuff. Now I have uh, prepared something for you guys so let's go down here a little bit and I have prepared you a little example and I will show you how to derive the Lamé coefficients which are here and also how to derive the unit vectors uh, across all uh, the directions. So if you, for example, have a arbitrary given coordinate system and you want to find out the unit vector, how do you do that? Okay. Now, first we need to specify our coordinate systems. If you have no specification of your coordinate systems, it's quite hard to do, uh, I must say. It's actually impossible to do because you don't know how your coordinate system transforms and how it behaves in the curvilinear space. Now we have here uh, the the typical cylindrical coordinates I took this because it's quite easy to calculate now you see we have the x coordinate as um, r cosine of phi I hope you can imagine this is your radial distance this is uh, your height in your coordinate system and this phi is the angle between your x axes and your point okay uh, I hope you know cylindrical coordinates. If you don't, uh, please write me some comments. Maybe I'll do a video on cylindrical coordinates also. So we have specified this x can be calculated as r cosine phi, y can be calculated as r sine phi, and z can be calculated as z because there is a one-to-one -one, um, correspondence between them. Now. Uh, what we have to do is first calculate the Jacobian matrix, okay? Um, the Jacobian matrix is the key point in all the transformations from one system to the other. You know that maybe for um, volume integrals, how we transform, uh, transform one volume integral to the other, it's used, uh, we are using the determinant of the Jacobian actually. Now uh, we are using the Jacobian matrix. It's quite easy to remember, uh, although I always forget how it actually is. Now what you do is actually you say, okay good, I take the first coordinate, I differentiate it in respect to R, to phi and to C. So this is the first coordinate, first coordinate. Okay, you do the same for the second and the third. I use your partials because in the most general case your x, your y and z could um, depend on three different uh, coordinates. For example, you could have the case where x is equal to q1, q2, q2 uh, q3. So it's a function of q1, q2 and q3. So we do the same for the y coordinate, we do the same for the z coordinate and um, I could have written this down as z prime but I just left it out because it's very very easy to see that this is the same correspondence that we have in here. Now if we explicitly calculate that, so if we calculate the partial of x in respect uh, to r, you see this r will go away, we are left with cosine phi and if we differentiate uh, x in respect with phi we get minus r uh, sine phi and for the last coordinate because we have no z dependence in here this will be equal to zero. 
We do the same for the R coordinate. We get here sine phi for the first. If we differentiate in respect to phi, we get R cosine phi, and for the last coordinate, we get zero. Now, uh, again, because Y has no dependence on the Z. Now, let's do the last one, which is uh, we differentiate uh, Z in respect to R. There is no uh, there is no R dependence in here, so this will give us zero. If we differentiate this in respect to phi, there is no phi in here, so this will give us zero. And um, if we differentiate Z in respect to Z, we get one. Okay, quite simple. Now, how do we calculate uh, these Lamé coefficients? First of all, what we have to do is we have to find uh, the vectors along the uh, new coordinates, which are r, phi, and z. And in order to find these um, vectors, we simply use the transform property of the uh, Jacobian, and we transform uh, the first unit vector of our Cartesian coordinate system to um, this new coordinate system, which is uh, depending on r, phi, and z, and we get cosine phi, sine phi, zero. Okay, it's pretty easy because this uh, unit vector along the x coordinate is just this guy here. Uh, this y direction is just simply this. It's a simple uh, matrix multiplication, and you will see you actually get this first column, the second, and the third. Actually, you don't have to do that. Um, you could also say, okay, this is h uh, r, this is h phi, and this is h z. Now, you might be asking yourself, what is this notation with the line uh, beneath it? Um, Maybe you heard about it. It's an alternative way of writing vectors. Okay, you could I could have written this down like this, but I think I never get the uh, these arrows right. So I will just stick to this uh, underlined notation. Maybe from electrical engineering, you know, for uh, complex currents and voltage, they also use this kind of uh, underline because actually they are working in complex numbers, they are vectors and so forth. So, um, and that was quite a little bit of off topics, uh, but there we go. Okay, now uh, we do the same with the second unit vector of the Cartesian coordinate system and with the third and we are getting these columns of the Jacobian out of this. Now, in order to get the Lamé coefficients, we have to find the um, norm of these guys, actually, the magnitude of these vectors that we get out of here. The first one is quite easy. It's the square root. Okay, I will write it down here. It's the square root of cosine phi squared plus sine phi squared. And if we take the square root of this guy, you see cosine phi squared plus sine phi squared gives you 1. Square root of 1 is 1. Um, actually, you could say, okay, this is plus minus, but um, I, I have um, intentionally left out the plus minus here in front. So if we do the same for the second vector, we get this, r squared sine phi squared plus r squared cosine squared, and we take the square root of that. You see this, this guy and this guy, if we um, take out the common r squared, we see that this is again 1, so this guy is r squared cosine phi squared plus sine phi squared and this again is 1 and if we take the square root of r we get one, uh, r just out of it. If we do the same for uh, the hz coordinate this is pretty easy because this is already 1 so the length is 1 and these are the corresponding Lamé coefficients okay so the Lamé coefficient for uh, r coordinate is just 1 the Lamé coefficient for the phi direction is equal uh, to uh, R, and the Lamé coefficient in the z direction is just equal to 1, okay? Um, because the magnitude of these guys are the Lamé coefficient. Some t uh, I drew this like this because we are taking the magnitude or the absolute value no let's stick to uh, let's stick to the magnitude of a of the vector hz and um, many times actually this is uh, just the same as hz so instead of saying okay I have a vector and I take the magnitude you can write down hz uh, just like in the previous videos where we denoted them with h1 h2 and h3 
Now, in order to calculate the unit vectors along your uh, coordinates, uh, which might be important if you are integrating functions that I have these uh, guys in here, um, unit vectors in them, that is quite problematic because your boundaries, uh, better your integration will change because there is a some phi and so forth. So in order to find the unit vectors, we actually do nothing else than take this Lamé vector and divide it by the Lamé coefficients. It's just like normalizing. Okay, actually these are the coordinate vectors, but we have to normalize them. So we divide them by their magnitude and we're we are getting these unit vectors. Now, that actually concludes it. Let's uh, just recap what we did, okay? If you have some kind of arbitrary coordinate system and uh, you know how to calculate the x and y and z coordinate, uh, in dependence of these new coordinates, let them be q1, q2, and q3, then what you do is you calculate the Jacobian. So you take your x coordinate, uh, differentiate in respect to q1, q2, and q3. Do the same with the uh, y coordinate and the z coordinate. And then what you end up is with this matrix. And then the columns of this matrix are actually equal to the vectors uh, along the new coordinate axis. So this is actually a, along q1. This is Q2 direction and this is the Q3 direction, you see Q1 and Q2 depend on phi and r, so they will change somehow. And instead of taking them as they are, we take their unit vectors, okay? And in order to do this as unit vectors, we have to divide them by their magnitude. And the magnitude of these vectors is the set of Lamé coefficients that we were looking for in the first place. And if you need the unit vectors, you just simply use this kind of formula and you end up with all the unit vectors for all the new coordinates and we are done. Actually, we could do that also in the other way around. So transform for, from a curvilinear unit vector to a um, to a Cartesian vector and so forth, but I think this uh, this way around is the most often used, so and that's what I um, did here. Actually, you could go ahead, and I really um, encourage you to do that. Do this with uh, spherical coordinates and see if you get the same results for the Lamé coefficients, okay? So that actually concludes this video on this topic, how to calculate um, the curl, the divergence, and the gradient in different kind of frames of reference, or better, in different coordinate systems. Uh, so what you should have understood from this point is actually there are some fixed formulas. Now, I didn't tell you how to derive these fixed formulas. Let's have a look at them quite fast. So I'll go up here a little bit. Here, I didn't tell you how to derive them, but actually there, this derivation is just using the geometrical or integral definition of the divergence, the curl, and also you can use this um, from the most standard definitions of the gradient and so forth. So this is quite easy to go through. While this is the easiest because it's just scaling by the amount, uh, these guys are a little bit more harder to understand because we actually have to calculate um, volume integrals and surface integrals and so forth. But I left it out because this is a more application um, uh, related uh, video. So you can now you can do this uh, by drawing if you like for all the engineers and physicists who actually just wanted a way to remember these Lamé coefficients, this um, way is the best. But uh, I think the best method to remember is actually using uh, the Jacobian, uh, transform your unit vectors to your um, curvilinear space and then take the columns of the Jacobian and normalize them and you have actually your unit vectors and if you take the magnitude of these vectors um, you are done you can calculate the Lamé coefficients and that's actually it. I really think this topic is awesome because um, in most books that I read they just write it down that it's 
calculated this way, but no one actually uh, explains you how to do it for an arbitrary coordinate system. And I didn't find any video on YouTube. Um, if there is one, uh, I'm sorry, I didn't want to copy something or mm, do uh, some kind of um, um, unethnical stuff here, but uh, this is just... Um, a piece of me sharing with you guys and I hope you will enjoy this video and go out into the world and uh, curl any coordinate system that you see and take the divergence of any coordinate system that you see because now you are powerful uh, beyond measures you are so to say over 9000 okay you are like Son Goku you can do anything okay so uh, that concludes my video see you guys and stay tuned for upcoming videos